PC gaming has never been in a more conflicting time right now, where if you look at all the new high-end PC parts that are coming out, they're all ridiculously expensive. And in fact, it's turning a lot of people off PC gaming and they don't really carry a whole lot of good value for money. However, if we're looking at the mid-range or even the low end, there is some extremely good deals to be had right now. And in fact, this PC right here, the whole computer, brand new, you can build this for under $650 and it will play all the latest titles at 1080p with smooth FPS. So today we're gonna show you what parts are in this PC, how you can build it for yourself, where all the parts, I checked the list, they're all readily available and they come with free shipping. So you can fear not about prices going up or things being out of stock because these parts are ready to go. And what we've got right here is a PC with a Ryzen 5 3600 six core 12 thread. It includes a cooler and you can get this for $120 shipped. Now for the graphics card, the most important part of a gaming PC, we're going with the RX 6600. This is $250 brand new, and it offers incredible value for money, especially for 1080p gaming, where it's an efficient graphics card, but it also has eight gigabytes of VRAM if you wanna turn a lot of the settings to high or ultra. So without further ado, let's show you guys a whole list of the parts, and also I'll put some links in the description below. Let's start building this thing out, tuning it, and then more importantly, seeing how it performs in some of these games. If you wanna get yourself a cheap, legit Windows 10 Pro Key license, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as $15. When you use that coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows activated right now. Links in the description below. So one of the best things about a PC like this is not only is it offering extremely good value for money, but it's also extremely easy to build up. Once you get all these parts in, we can just simply put the motherboard down and then insert the CPU, the Ryzen CPU, and just make sure the arrow lines up, insert that, clamp it down with the clip, and then insert our cooler and install that. You have to have a screwdriver for this. Install our DDR4 memory, and then put the motherboard into the case. And then after that, we insert our power supply, screw that off, insert our SSD, and then after that, we can start connecting our power connectors to the motherboard, as well as our motherboard front input output connectors, and then also connect our SSD to the motherboard if you're using the SATA cable. Then the final step in building your PC is simply to insert your graphics card, install your power connector to that, screw it off, and then we are good to go. We've got a gaming PC that essentially is ready to go. This whole process should take you anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, and it's very quick. Hopefully the B-roll here is showing you just how easy it is. But once we've got that PC ready to go, we can then turn it on and get into the BIOS. Then after we've got our PC ready to go, we can switch on the power switch at the back of the computer, then press the power button. And then while we're booting the system up, we can press the delete or F2 key on our keyboard and get into the BIOS. Because this is one really important setting to tune up our system and make sure we actually enable this memory setting to get smooth FPS. And that's your XMP profiles and just make sure that's locked in, then save and exit, and make sure now that we have our USB Windows bootable, ready to go, and then we can install Windows. I do prefer with AMD systems, especially Ryzen CPUs, to install Windows 10 over Windows 11, because there's really no benefit to having Windows 11 installed for AMD CPUs, at least at this point in time. So the first title we're pulling up here is Death Stranding, which was actually, believe it or not, free to play they let you download the whole game for free on Epic Games during the New Year season. And we've got this at very high settings at 1080p with no upscaling or anything like that. And the FPS is over 120 and the 1% and 0.1% lows are extremely smooth, meaning this game is running great with this setup. Now, one thing you'll notice is too, this PC, since it's actually got some really efficient parts being used, while we're playing this game, which is both CPU and GPU demanding, 
we're only drawing around 250 watts from the wall, even with a standard 500 watt power supply. However, I have done an additional step here. If you guys are into undervolting, you can get a program called MSI Afterburner. I actually use this too to display the FPS numbers that you see on the screen, as well as checking out GPU temperatures and percentage being used to make sure everything's running smoothly. And here is where we're able to, via undervolting, minus 200 megahertz on the core, as well as upping our memory speeds and then also dropping the voltage down around about 83 millivolts, we're able to then save around 40 watts of power from the wall with pretty much identical FPS. And in fact, I think it actually slightly gained more FPS in Death Stranding via doing this. So what's not to love about undervolting? And we just finished up with Warzone 2, playing this game with the quality presets. So basically on all high settings, we got here over 90 average FPS with smooth 1% and 0.1% lows. So if you were looking at playing a 1080p native resolution Warzone 2 with smooth FPS on a budget, then this PC is certainly going to impress. But we've got one more title here, and that is Fortnite. But this time around with Fortnite, I believe they've updated the whole game to be much more graphically intensive. I believe they are using the Unreal Engine 5 now. So this game should actually run well on demanding hardware, even just at 1080p. So let's get into this and see what we can do here. So now running Fortnite on this hardware at epic settings at 1080p, we're actually only at around 40 average FPS. But if we change this over now to say low settings, you'll get over 140 average FPS at 100% screen resolution, so that's pixel for pixel. Though if we start lowering the settings to say medium or high, I actually prefer playing this on either of these two settings. And if you're going with medium settings, you're gonna get close to around 100 FPS at that max screen resolution of 100%. Or if you're going for high, you're gonna get a bit more visual fidelity, but it's gonna go around about 60 to 70 average FPS here. So I'm hard pressed to choose which of the settings I like more here, medium or high. But regardless, this game is actually so much more enjoyable now with the update that's in place. It's almost like I'm playing an entirely new game here with Fortnite. But what's even more impressive is this PC. So let's go over now and wrap up a conclusion with this gaming rig right here. So this whole video, I've actually been hiding a bit of a secret from you guys. And in fact, I'm trying something new in today's video and I would love your feedback in the comment section below. And that is, I priced up the parts here all new. And so if you wanted to build something like this, you wanted no hassles and just all the parts shipped to your door, and with warranty, you can do that for $630. However, if you are a little bit adventurous and you don't mind buying some used parts and even cleaning some things up, you can save a lot of money. And here is where on my local marketplace, that is Facebook Marketplace, I managed to pick up some deals on used PC parts. And that is the Ryzen 5 3600. I actually got that used and that was nearly half price to what it was brand new. And then I also got the RX 6600, which again, just like that Ryzen 5 3600, that came in at practically half the price that it was going for brand new. And then the last component that really saved a lot of money was the A320 motherboard. We got this for $15 used. However, it didn't include an IO shield, but I did make up a custom IO shield for it. And then also the final component that was used was the DDR4 memory. And we saved about $10 here versus new. However, even just using those four components, used versus new, we managed to save roughly $300 off our budget. So going down from $630 all the way down close to $330. However, we did use some new parts in today's build too and still kept that budget down. So we used a new ATX case, a new power supply and a new SSD. And so you don't have to always just go used or just go new. I find a lot of the times if you combine the two together, you're going to get the best of both worlds. And that is a PC that still looks absolutely mint but also performs so well for the dollar. Though with all that out of the way, I'll drop some links in the description below for you guys so you can check out these parts on your own. 
Also, I'll put a link to my recent used PC parts hunt in the description where I picked up two of these components that we used in this budget build. So if you wanna see how I do the used PC parts hunting, you can get an idea by watching that video. You can start saving yourself quite a bit of money and get the best price performance for yourself. Though, all that out of the way, do let us know in the comment section below what you think of today's gaming PC. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And also one more awesome thing about buying, say for instance, sometimes used motherboards is you don't even need to activate Windows because the person before it already activated that motherboard with Windows 10 Pro, for example. So that saved me even some more money as opposed to buying a new motherboard, which you generally have to activate those and buy yourself a key. Even though you can get Windows 10 for very cheap, especially using that link in the description below, but $15 saved is $15 made. Though the final thing to touch on in today's video, I think it's an important one, and that is the value for money is on the under $1,000 segment right now. I think all these expensive graphics cards like these RX 7900 XTXs and RTX 4080s, these things really are just going into a stupid price realm, but I'm noticing parts like the RX 6600 and also the Ryzen 5 CPUs, for example, on AM4, they're extremely good value, and in fact, they've never been at better prices since I've been into PC gaming. So I think it's a two-way market right now, and I think the best place to be if you're into PC gaming right now is actually the mid-range like we built here today you can just extract some phenomenal value for money. So don't feel like you have to go out and get an RTX 4080 to be a relevant gamer. And you can play these titles with high or ultra settings and get an amazing experience and not spend a heap of money. Anyway, with that aside, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Overwatch 2944. And they ask, I got an MSI Mech 2X RX 6700 XT for $210. It was used, of course, but the card posted and gamed well. The input output was surprisingly clean without any corrosion present. Good deal. To answer this question directly, that is an amazing deal. So we saw that RX 6700 XT was coming in even cheaper than the new RX 6600. It's actually gonna be a more powerful GPU and it's more geared up towards 1440p gaming. So if you're not afraid to go to the used market and I've got a lot of videos to help you guys get the best deals, then I do encourage you to try and get some used PC parts. Make sure they work before you buy them. You're just gonna get such good value for money. Anyway guys, do let us know in the comment section below your thoughts and opinions on this gaming PC. Love reading them as always. And also if you've stayed this far and you wanna see the Tech Yes content as soon as it drops, then be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.